Welcome to MMB Air Gun Review. Today we are going to be getting into the Sig Sauer MPX, what makes it function, what makes it tick, and what exactly does that charging handle do. Let's separate rumor from fact. A lot of questions about the Sig Sauer MPX 177 CO2 um, air gun, basically. Uh, how does it function? Um, what do the functions do? Does the charge and handle have a purpose? How exactly does it work? And what are the internals? We're going to dive into this today. And um, I hope you can join me. And I'm going to show you exactly what makes these things tick. Um, they're pretty, they're uh, pretty much a um, engineering nightmare. <laughs> and uh, that is... <laughs> one definite about them. They are not engineered. Let me find the right Allen key here. They are not engineered well at all. Um, it looks like things were just compiled inside one thing after another. But we'll get into it so I can show you guys exactly what I mean. And I can show you how some of this stuff functions and exactly what it does so we can maybe dispel some myths out there about these. Uh... Now this and the, uh, the MPX and the MCX are internally the same. So keep that in mind as we go. So this is going to carry over to the MCX also. Let's pull our sights off here real quick. And... If you get bored, you can skip through, but some of this stuff, you just may want to uh, learn exactly what you need to do to take it apart. So I understand if you stay, there is no CO2 in this, just so you know. We'll take this off. There you are. I use the little CO2 cartridges because I never seem to... Um, use it all. So we have various screws in here and I'm going to sit each one of these to the uh, to the side. Now do this at your own risk. This is just to show you the function inside. This is not how to modify. This is not how to uh, do anything other than use it for its intended purpose. We have a little screw up top here by the what they call the charging handle. And it is a different size screw. And there's various screws all over the place here. Um, I actually have had this apart and serviced it before. So that's how I know how they are inside. And I actually don't use all the screws to put them back together because, well, it's honestly a lot of overkill. There's a lot of surprises when you when you get in here and you really start seeing how it is constructed and what they did. Um, it's actually not very impressive. All these, all these do look very good from the outside. They're just a nightmare on the inside. And we do have to get in here to the handle. And uh, I'll put up this compartment. Go down here and we'll pull there's a there's a Phillips head in here. You're gonna to want to pull that out. And be careful when you take these apart and you separate the two halves of the receiver that you don't lose the bolt that holds the handle together. And you have a screw underneath here also. This has already been lubricated. I did this the other day and I figured why not do a video so I can show you guys exactly how this operates. And if I sound like I come down on this, well, honestly, it's because I am. I just don't think that Sig Sauer has 
Um, and as far as their air guns go, I think they lack a lot of uh, a lot of quality. Am I missing anything? So I need to get this rail off. Is, am I missing a screw? Yes, I am right here. They screw this rail also separates from side to side. So let's set that to the side. And we can pull this side off. And there we go, that's separated. This is your outer barrel. There is a stainless barrel that sits inside of this, and that's probably the most quality piece about this particular setup that they have. So let me uh, see if I can see if I got anything else. Am I missing anything? Yes, I am, because we have these screws in here. I believe these are the last ones. And be very careful when you separate this because there's a lot going on in here. You want to separate it. Get these screws out. You want to separate it from the side that the screws go in. So just remember that, okay? Because you can run into a nightmare if you don't. There we go. Now, theoretically, this should start to separate at least. I may have to get something to get in there and start it. So I'm going to get in there. I'm going to pry a little bit. And as you can see, it's just a sandwich together. We're going to pull back this charging handle a little bit. I'm going to get in by the handle. I'm just going to work it slow. It should come off fairly easily. And we're going to lift it. When it starts to come, we're going to lift it straight up. And that's because there's mechanisms that are held into place. Okay. I'm going to lift this. Try to lift it straight up. If I can, I don't think there's anything else. Holding it. Might there we go. Just like so. And I'm gonna turn this over. I'm gonna show you. This is your safe and your um semi function switch on one side that operates the other side also. And we're gonna look inside of here. I hope I can you can't get you in any farther, but Oh, there we go. So this is an issue right here. So that's why I said be careful because this barrel is a nightmare. And I'm going to try not to mess with this because it's a pain. Now here, right here, I'm going to try to zoom this in on the, on the finishing video. Right here, we have two halves that are sandwiched, that sandwich the barrel. And there's another adapter here. They go in a specific way and can only go one way for this to function properly. There is zero gaskets on this side where it shoots the pellet, which is a shame because that means there's an extreme loss of pressure in these joints right here. There is a stainless barrel that runs up through. So when you load your magazine in here, there's a part that cycles and the air blows through and pushes it through, but we're losing, because once again, no seals, we're losing a lot of air pressure. So there's a design flaw right there. Um, and what we talk about mostly people want to know is, well, what does the charging handle do? Well, let me show you how, exactly how this charging handle works. Maybe I can get you get a little closer here. Uh, how this works is your charging handle is just sits in a groove right here, and it's actually attached by one spring attaches it right here. And I'm going to pull that out and show it to you. That is it. There's your mechanism right there. But if you see this little nub sticking down off the charging handle. You notice that. What that does, put that back on there. What that does is if you see this block right here, this part when you charge it here, comes in contact with this block. So this is actually pulled back and charged already. You see how that's back like this? So it's charged and it locks into place via these mechanisms here when you do that. Now, let me explain how the air works and runs on this because it's actually quite simple once you get in here and you start looking at it. So your air or your CO2 I should say comes in the back here. It comes in through this port, comes up, follows up and over and down into this valve right here. Now this block and what you what appears to be some sort of air mechanism here is not. What this is, is there is a spring in here, and I'm going to try to pull this trigger without losing components. Try to, there we go. You see how that block just went forward? Okay, that's because it was previously 
charged and there is a spring in here and when I pull back this charging handle you see how that I'm not going to pull it all the way but you can see how that pulls that block back it pulls it to a certain point it compresses the spring into this little valve right here I call it a valve although it's not really a valve it's just a spring in here and that pushes that up this is not connected to any air nor is this block okay does that make any sense so it's a faux charging handle, but it does serve somewhat of a purpose. And it's my belief that this purpose was an afterthought because of jamming problems. So it gives us that realistic feeling that it's actually a charging handle and it's doing something. And especially when you pull the trigger on the first pull and you get that big spring ejecting back and pushing this block forward. So I'm going to push this back again. Okay, this is what the charging handle does. And I just pushed against a spring, but as you can see... In here, right here, what there is, is there's nothing here. But when that spring comes out, it hits a pin. Okay, there's a, there's the spring comes out, there's a little pin and it hits it hard. What that does is force belt alignment. Okay, it blasts the air forward just a bit to force a belt alignment. Okay. The pellets don't ever need to be chambered because they don't chamber. They're always in the belt. They fire directly from the belt. What that little blast of air does, once again, this is connected to nothing, but that spring that's inside of this mechanism here that springs forward hits the end of a valve here. And the combination of this heavy block hitting and that little pin Hitting there forces alignment of the belt. That's why when you get a jam, when you use the charging handle, it's trying to force an alignment again. And unfortunately, that happens all too often. Okay? And let me show you how that works. So I can take this. Let me get this on a black one here. And I'm going to center it between, between black and white. And I'm going to load this, okay? I'm going to put this put, put this magazine in here and up, okay? And that's there. And as you can see, as you can see, now I can pull this out again. It's still out of alignment. Loading the magazine doesn't, does not align it, okay? But now, watch this. When I pull the trigger, okay, watch this. What it does is force an alignment. Okay, you see how that works? So now, theoretically, after that alignment is forced, this should cycle properly every time. Okay, it doesn't pierce any CO2. It doesn't have anything to do with how it shoots. It just forces an alignment on the belt itself. Now, if you become, it becomes jammed in between again, watch this. Okay, see if I can, this is hard to do because it's setting down. So let me, let me get this back in here. I'm going to put this back in again. I'm trying not to, to make my pieces go off, but that's in between right now. Okay, but the simple act of bringing the charging handle back and the belt is not moving right now. Nothing has moved, and I'm going to show that to you. Okay, so I just pulled the charging handle, and I'm going to take that out. And as you can see, that's still misaligned, correct? I'm going to slide it back in. We'll do the same thing again. Pull the trigger, which gives us the effect that the charging handle is actually um, having a huge effect. And I'm going to simply pull it forward. I'm trying not to lose parts. Come on. There we go. And that's a big bang. It's forcing the pin forward. And once again, aligning the belt while firing simultaneously, okay? But it does force it to align. So, but after that's aligned, we can cycle this. We can go right through, and it'll still shoot. So charging it isn't required. It still shoots, okay? See that? And it's moving this forward, and it's releasing the air in the valve constantly constantly. This is the charging handle 
is to add the realism when you first get it to pull it like you've done something major and it's designed to line up the belt initially. So that's why when we're cycling these and it goes into the half position, once again, it goes into the half position that we pull the charging handle and it straightens it out. I hope that answers any of your questions on how this works inside. It's just connected. The charging handle is connected basically to two springs, to actually one spring, and it pulls back a block that's attached to a spring that simply helps the magazine stay where it's supposed to be for cycling. Thanks for watching M&B Air Gun Review. If you like this video, please hit like, share, subscribe, and I'll be talking to you soon. Thanks a lot, and bye.